All right, folks. Hello and welcome to new edition of Talk Power BI. Today we have some special guests and a special topic. So today we were talking about. Uh, we're not talking about business groups. Hold on, let me fix that. All right, there. That's the right title. Role of IT versus business groups in this new world of self-service BI and Power BI. So we have a guest, Danny Martins and Raul Jimenez, and you're going to be able to find links to their LinkedIn profiles in the description below. So if you enjoy this discussion with these awesome guys, then go ahead and connect with them. Uh, they are both Power BI professionals and are looking to serve businesses worldwide. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's say hello to folks who are on. I see Matthias. Uh, hello, Matthias. Good to see you again. Matthias is definitely a regular on our show. And uh, yeah, so if you're joining us live, just uh, Say hello in the chat and uh, let us know where you are joining us from. All right, cool. So I see some new folks joining on. So yep, just say hello. Uh, Robert is certainly here. He's going to be monitoring the chat. If you have any questions around this topic, then queue them up and be nice to Robert because he'll be picking your questions in the end. We're going to save some time for Q&A. All right, so I see folks joining in. Again, folks, drop in a hello. I'll come back and um, yeah, just, just make sure I do a shout out to you. But let's go ahead and, and, and I'm pretty keen on diving into our topic here today. So Danny and Raul, I'm gonna kick it off by, so actually what I have in mind is I wanna talk about the old IT how it used to be, how it unfortunately still is in a lot of companies. We're talking about the new IT. What does the new what should the new IT look like? And then we'll talk about the business groups. And there, I think they do get great power than before. And that's kind of my third topic I want to talk about. What does that look like? And lastly, does that great power for the business groups come with great responsibility? What is their responsibility? going to be in this new world and of course then we'll do some q a reflect all right cool so as i promised i'm gonna uh say hello to everybody so we have adam hello adam hi steve from calgary canada adam adam is here from rally north carolina uh d walden says hello from columbus ohio nelson pita is from lisbon portugal dan says hello from divide colorado masila is here hello and welcome folks so let's dive in so again the topic is role of IT versus business groups in the new world of Power BI and self-service BI. And let's kick it off by talking about the old IT. So what I wrote down here was the, you know, they're, they're the preservers of the status quo. And the first thing that comes to mind is everything that, so I've spent most of my life in the business side. So guys, I'll admit I might be a slightly biased, but I've spent some time in IT too. So I understand their pain. I understand their perspective. But still, as being part of the business group, it still stuck me as odd that anything that was that needed a change, I had to submit a change request. Now, now of course, people who have worked with IT, they'll say, yeah, of course, Avi, how else would you engage with IT? But I think that's a fundamental contradiction between business and IT. IT, everything is a change request. Everything needs a justification, right? I mean, everything needs an ROI or something it needs to clear that hurdle. It's like, oh yeah, you know, the default is the status quo. The default is that, oh, if you cannot justify a change request, no change is going to be made. Default is everything stays the same. And it that cannot be you know, like more opposite than the life of a business group because stuff doesn't happen with a change request. The COVID pandemic did not come in and apply for a change request with all the businesses in the world. It just happened, right? So, so yeah, business is always changing. And of course, COVID is kind of an extreme, extreme example, but it is always changing. And yeah, you got to adapt with that. It's adapt or die. So that's the reality of the business groups, but IT, it's that change request. So Danny, Raul, what, uh, Danny, let's start off with you. What have you seen um, the old IT, right? 
right? I mean, how, how do they tend to think? How have you seen that work? And does it, yeah, yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah, I think um, I, I meet them constantly still. Uh, we can talk about the new IT, the new world of IT uh, later on, of course. <laughs> I also meet them, but there's still a lot of dinosaurs out there, so to speak. Uh, but I have been working in IT departments as well in, in uh, earlier in my career. So I, to a certain extent, I do understand where they come from. Eh? They usually have this spaghetti of IT systems that they need to handle. Yeah. So if they don't go through a proper change request, they don't know what is the impact on all the other systems. Yeah. So. What I always uh, get when I come to a company and I introduce Power BI to them, oh, they, they get scared because they think, oh, it's yeah. a new system. You need a data warehouse. How are we going to live through this? Well, I'm thinking there's nothing new. I, I was working with all Excel files already for the longest time. Suddenly I introduce Power BI and the whole IT department wakes up. And that yeah. always surprises me. Suddenly they think there's a new system in the IT landscape that they mm -hmm. need to deal with. So I get a lot of pushback always if I introduce uh, Power BI. And that is my experience with uh, with old IT. Raul, uh, what have you seen I, I, out, out in the wild out there? Let me see, I agree with that. Um, I've seen both and I, I think Danny kind of mentioned it because we'll talk about it. The new IT, like everything in life, there's pros and cons and there are people. So thinking about the old in the sense of people that are very regimental, I find that um, because they were the ones that had to fix any any problem, all the problems and all the headaches, um, they were very, as you said, obviously, you know, like, why, if it doesn't benefit me, if there's no benefit, why would I do all these things? And I'm the one that later has to get a call at 10 o'clock at night because something isn't working. And so um, also they can be, as we know, very regimental and this is how things are because systems, if they are the main role of a system uh, distribution, it has to be very regimental so you can keep track of it and, and maintain it and, and keep it working. Um, so yes, well, as Martin Danny said, um, things that I have encountered initially when it's a bad interaction is like, hold on a minute, no, but you're gonna go and change you know, the source code, you're gonna go to the source data, you're gonna go and interact with the system. And when telling them, no, look, that we're gonna, read only data and collect it and, and go out, uh, out of, you know, stay out of your hair, it changes. I see that very big, like, oh, hold on a minute. So now you're going to be asking me to do these SQL statements to get your information. And I have to do this. And no, and you know, it, it's a real, like, oh, you're, you're kidding. Oh, this is amazing. So you're, I'm not going to be getting tickets as you described that. And I'm going to go, can yeah. you please give me a table with this information? Oh, and you're not going to uh, be dealing and moving and changing yeah. stuff in the source uh, databases. So my initial, I have had that initial, like, no, hold on a minute, get out of my hair to, yeah. oh, no, this is great. So you can help me. Um, it, it changes. I find it that once you properly explain it, yeah, it, it changes the tune and they're like all for it. That, but there is pushback, definitely. Certainly, certainly. So I, I do feel like, and, and of course, Sometimes I've heard the fear expressed as that, oh, Power BI is going to make IT redundant. I think that couldn't be farther from the truth. As Raul was talking about, if anything, their, their role is more critical in the new landscape. But let's talk about that, that fear for a bit. So they, they are, um, so they have their systems in place. Often IT has something in place. And here comes kind of a new tool that's of concern to them. They just want to understand that, oh, how is it going to change the landscape? And, and of course, as Raul talked about, that it, it takes some time to, you know, to kind of transfer. I mean, in, in, initially, it might seem that, oh, this is just more work for me, right? And, 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 and uh, unfortunately, I think what has happened in the past is IT has probably seen this oh new shiny fancy BI tool cycle a few times, right? I, I, and I had seen that even as a business user, like some new leader would typically come in, look at the state of things, look at the old uh, BI tool that we were using, see that it was not working. It was never working because everybody was doing export to Excel and just going, you know, right commando from there. And they say, oh, this is 
the, the classic Excel hell and they'll say, oh, this can't be, you know, we are, we are, <laughs> you know, we are X hundred million dollar organization and this can't be right. Um, so they bring in consultants who give them a nice dog and pony show, a nice PowerPoint slide show. So, oh yeah, buy our tool and everything is fixed. And IT goes and does the implementation for many years. And at the end of it, inevitably, it was still export to Excel. So, so maybe that embedded memory is there, <laughs> generational memory. And uh, yeah, so th they, they have a lot of concerns about that. Um, uh, I was going to say, so what about some of the other things that I, I hear, I hear folks talk about, which is they always start talking about security and that sort of stuff that, Hey, who's going to have access that that's often a concern for the old IT, right? Uh, anything else that you see that, yeah, I just want to kind of dig in. It's like, what, what is going on in their heads? What are they thinking? What are they concerned about? Uh, what you just said, uh, Avi, like for that security, are you, are you going to, you know, are you going to be playing and, 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 and uh, uh, damaging my, my baby? You know, are you like uh, the, the, that, for me, a, a very simple but thing to say straight up, up, up front is it's read only. We, we, we won't have access to change anything in the system. Um, we are simply want it's as if we are getting a printed out, a printout, just the, the raw data from the system. Don't worry. And again, we'll be out. Security is is a big one. Um, having to explain a gateway um sometimes is and and uh, going through look we're going to be connecting from an external source explaining how it is why it is done like that how only people with the, the company email can have it and uh the, anyway it, yeah. he has to approve it so it goes hand in hand you know i cannot connect to the database unless that user has been given access to it which is i'm sure like one of the first things we all do you know talk to it and say look can you create an email and give it access to the database because we're going to be connecting to it so once those things are explained um i have found again uh, there's a change but yes uh, yeah. of course those two things more work for me you're going to be another person that thinks what they're going to be sending me 20 tickets a day for things and security mm -hmm. and again once once they see one, it's, there's no security risk. And not only that, but it's going to take workload and pressure off of them. Um, I have seen, I've, I don't know if I've been lucky or not, but I have yeah. always seen a change. Even I don't always see pushback hard, yeah. but when I do, it, it changes. Yeah. Do you, so, so Danny, uh, uh, have you seen any other, other specific fear? And, and Matthias is talking about what we touched upon too, is that at some level, they they fear that they're gonna become redundant. They're gonna lose their jobs, and boy, that can be scary. Yeah, I, I see another fear as well, uh, Avi, and that that has to do with uh, with security. Mm -hmm. um, is is the the confidentiality of the data that you're trying to access? That is often a concern to them as well. Is what I have noticed, especially yeah. uh, I'm I'm sitting here in Europe, and and the, the privacy legislation is huge nowadays. So they're always wow. concerned about why do you need access? What do you want? Yeah. And as, as a, a data analyst, right, you want to have as much data as possible because you don't know exactly what's out there and what connections you can uh, can make connections in the sense the, the data talking to each other. Yeah. So that's also some sometimes that I, I really need explanation like Rule says and, and convincing as well that it's not only that you do read only, but also that the data may provide you insights that the, that the business uh, management can use in the end. And that's, that requires often a, a lot of convincing as well. So, and persuasion, <laughs> I have to say. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's definitely there as well. That's awesome. Hey, we got some great comments coming in. Matthias is talking about security, always being a big, big issue. Um, IT, IT people want full control on-prem uh, and, and yeah. Uh, Scott is talking about yeah something that Raul was mentioning. We'll talk about that. And yeah, Brajendra is expressing some frustration with IT. Yeah, and Darren has this point. BI is taking a risk opening up for BI, given that they will be held accountable security. But folks, I, I want to point out there's another risk as well, which is my theory that a company that does not embrace this this BI. I mean, if you look around at the companies that are successful, 
I mean, a key reason why Uber grew so big so fast is the way they were able to leverage their data, right? So, and, and again, even if you look at old school companies, right? So, um, we have uh, 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 members in our, our Power BI Consultant program who are focused on the mining and the resource industry. Now, this is a very old school industry, but even there, man, the smart ones are rapidly adopting this cutting edge BI. And, and of course, it starts with Power BI, but then of course, I love, that's why I love the Microsoft path, which is that plus then you can go AI and all that sort of stuff. I so they're adopting that. that. And, and my theory is that it's not like the companies who don't adopt are gonna fall behind. I think they're gonna like go extinct because they're gonna be out competed at every step of the way, right? So if you look at a classic business, you know, I mean, customer acquisition, customer retention, servicing the customer, all of that stuff, you're gonna be out competed. So, so yeah, that's, that's a risk if, too. If you're not, if you're not moving forward, if you're staying there is static, yeah. the ones that are moving forward will surpass you. And yeah, and yeah. that's and, absolutely. Yeah. So, so, and we talk about this in the Power BI Consultant program too. And if you look at it from a personal perspective, a lot of people are very afraid to take the jump into something new, learning something new, or, uh, you know, maybe going from an employee to a consultant and so forth. And I say, hey, uh, you definitely weigh risks, but there is a risk of not doing anything as well. Right, risk of standing still, and in this day and age, that might be the biggest risk. Uh, cool. So let's uh, let's transition a little bit to the new IT. So these problems seem so uh, unsurmountable, or is it insurmountable? <laughs> One of those. <laughs> that uh, right? I mean that you know, and, and I start talking with IT, and and they're like, oh yeah, security. How are we going to ensure that everybody, uh, you know, nobody who shouldn't have access doesn't get access, right? Because you're gonna load all of that data to Power BI, and yes, you can talk to them about role level security and so forth. But still, they are they have concerns. They have concerns about uh, you slowing down the databases. So Raul was saying, you know, read only access rules. I know you're gonna slow down databases on all this sort of stuff, right? All of that is going on, and and frankly, I don't have an answer to that. You know, usually when I'm talking to them, frankly, that's a very tiresome conversation. Trying to convince them of everything that they're concerned about. So I don't do that. I, 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 you've probably heard me say this. I talk about, hey, if you find yourself in an unwinnable game, well, you got to change the game. So I, I like to change the game. And I say, you know what? All of your concerns are right. Now, I don't say to them, but in my mind, what I see them trying to do is kind of like you're trying to go on a road trip, but you're waiting for all of the traffic signals from here to, let's say, you're going to Portland to be green is never gonna happen. And and it doesn't make sense. That's not how you go on a road trip, right? I mean, you go there and let Google Maps help you, right? So um, so I say, hey, why don't we do a pilot project, like a small group? And it starts from there. And of course, yeah, these are real issues. I'm not saying they're not, but you know, as they start working, they see the value as well. They see the value that Raul was talking about, that it actually makes the job easier. It actually makes them look like superstars. So let's talk about new IT. Uh, Raul, let's uh, start with you. So when it does work, when you have gotten things started with IT, how does that look like? How does it play out? It's, it, let me see that nothing over the top, nothing crazy. It, it, works, it works out well. What does that mean? Um, exp we explain what we're going to be doing. We are given access. Obviously, they have to be um, uh, involved, and it's best to be involved just because it makes everything work. They are part of the thing. That make sure that everybody, that there's a, a central repository with email addresses for a role of a security. Uh, see if the company already has uh, security groups or distribution groups in their Windows environment set up because those are very important to um, set up role level security, important, no, but rather it makes it incredibly easy to deploy. Um, that gives them, and it's not trying to be gimmicky, but it, it makes them realize, no, we still have control, it'll be centralized. I think a big fear is from what they've seen before, as you were mentioning earlier, Avi, is that things that happen all over the place and there are 20 different versions of things and 20 different ways of doing things, they get scared. It's like, no guys, look, this is actually the opposite. We're going to do a central repository of information and then distribute it to all the reports um, yeah. 
are are being taken from one central place. Um, the role of a security guys, it's the companies groups the what, whatever you guys have decided are the security groups and distribution groups that is what's going to be used you guys are still keeping control uh making sure that uh, something what you said about slowing down the system um i um, making sure that we don't do etl or the the re refreshes aren't done certain days of the month if uh, the company does backups yeah. i've had that experience where the company always backs up their data either you know towards the end of the month or the beginning yeah. And we know I have an alarm. Disconnect the auto, the auto, the auto. Um, what do you call it? The auto uh, refreshes, so it doesn't do anything to the to the system. So things like that, you know, it's it's a key part of of uh, any work. IT is most definitely necessary, and that'll speed up things. Uh, that anyway. So yeah. um, it. So so it, it, it's important key to develop a good relationship at the, from the get-go. Yeah, that's great. So so it, I definitely hear that, yes, there is a centralized system. But, of course, there is decentralization as well. Frankly, it's always been there, I mean, which was in the form of Excel. So besides the central model, there are definitely going to be business users. And, I mean, they, they should be empowered. They should be empowered to use Power BI as well. Um where is the balance there? How have you seen that evolve? Uh, how do you mean? Uh, what what part of it? I, so I've you, seen... You talk about IT. a central system and you work with IT and there is role with security and everything, right? But there are going to be business users who are going to say, cool, this is awesome, but I need to do A, B, and C. And I always say that IT can you know, meet, meet some of the needs, but you cannot meet all of the business needs all the time just because it's impossible business just moves too quick. And that's why this idea of self-service BI where, yeah, cool, I gave you 80% or something. I have the infrastructure which has the core set of reports, but a business user inevitably is gonna say, oh, I wanna do this, this, and this. And of course, earlier their tool was Excel. Now it, it, they have a more powerful tool, robust tool Power BI, but you know, they're gonna build their own models as well. How do you, how do you see that? What I meant, what I, I meant like centralized, I meant like one set of data, you know, like one, like create yeah. data flows or data sets. Data flow is probably the, the way to go to have high level, maybe not overly worked on tables that everybody can connect. And But yes, definitely yeah. many different uh, uh, groups and people can connect to that data um, and, and do their own thing. And they should be given that, uh, that freedom. Uh, yeah. And again, it takes off a lot of the load off of IT. Yeah. Um, no, but I didn't mean like central control, but rather somebody. Now, I do think somebody has to, not somebody, not a, a person, but an entity, a group, either people or something, has to be the, the, the orchestra director. Okay, guys, the data, here's the central, the data, the, all the different data. But to have all different people connecting directly to the database, Mm -hmm. um, and creating different things could fall back a bit, not as bad, but fall back into the old Excel file where, you know, you're emailing people back and forth like, oh, no, you have the, the version from last week. Let me send yeah. you the new one. And so having one uh, uh, central data uh, data flows yeah. that everybody can work off, we know like, okay, we're working at least from the same numbers. But definitely people should be given access to those data flows and yeah. then yeah. do whatever they want. Yeah. So Danny, let's come to you. How have you seen, you know, so there's, the, we're going to call the old IT the dysfunctional IT. And we talked about that. And there's certainly challenges there. <laughs> we're certainly seeing some frustration out in the board. Uh, Michelle is talking about, uh, they're the worst in leading business. They don't understand business. They're never good at leading anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. That's no, I, I disagree about. with that. But, but, um, but there yeah, are a lot of good IT folks. The new yeah. IT. When it does work, what, what does that look like? Yeah, so one of the, the the biggest victories that I had was in a company where I introduced Power BI and I showed it to senior management and, and they loved the reports that uh, that I made. And it was not so much that it was me, but it was the power of Power BI uh, yeah. uh, more than anything. And, uh, and the reaction of IT was, and that was so funny, that they said, okay, let's build a data warehouse to support you. And that, that's going to take six months, but then you'll have your data warehouse with all your data. 
Yeah. And I've actually said, I don't need that, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll just get my data myself. You don't need to build that dinosaur again. And then you're stuck with that data warehouse because that becomes inflexible. Bingo. Yeah. So, th th so, but at the same time, it was, uh, I convinced them that it's really necessary to, to have such reports and to have such insights in the, in the data. Now, the other, uh, just uh, the experience that I'm having now is that the IT folks love what I'm doing. And they are giving me um, advice on how to publish the reports. Uh, I've not always been focusing on that part, yeah. but they are telling me, oh, you can report it in Teams and we're, we're going through the websites and, and give everybody access and those kind of things. Wow. So there you also have people that become more agile and more BI oriented and people yeah. who understand the business, just, yeah. just like we have evolved, right? From yeah. some yeah. kind of business user yeah. in a data user that they the it people also become data users and they see the power of that wow so Man, so i i see them i see guys transforming as well uh, uh, in that sense so um and and i applaud that uh, um, yeah. although i have to say if they start building reports they're horrible but <laughs> <laughs> so i can teach them something there <laughs> but uh um, say that just think, oh, just grab some data together and we'll make a nice uh, graph out of it. That's Power BI. Well, there's more uh, than than there's that. But but I've seen uh, changes as well in IT uh, people as well. So, so that's, that's a really interesting point. Frankly, I, I have never quite done that. I have always engaged with business groups. But yeah, I mean, when the opportunity presents itself to uh, build something for them, the IT group themselves. I mean, of course, they have a lot of their own data. There is, of course, data around service tickets, things like that, um, computers or uh, personnel. So they have a lot of data. Yeah, it could be interesting to develop reports for them and let them see the power of it themselves. Maybe that could be a convincing thing. Uh, a few folks on the comment board, they mentioned the importance of having a sponsor. And I think, Danny, you touched on it. You said that you had presented to senior management. So. How important is that, having a senior sponsor? It's the tone at the top. It's the tone at the top that drives these things. So wow. once you can convince them, yeah, it's going to trickle down in the organization. That's how it works in, in most, most organizations. Yeah. Uh, I'm not talking about the Ubers. They are super agile, I'm sure. But uh, yeah. most of them are very hierarchical. And it's the tone at the top that counts. But but you know, the, the odd thing is, though, that often what I've seen, and, and and maybe it's just me, maybe that's the kind of audience that I attract. So folks on YouTube, if you're watching and, 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 and if you follow in this group, let me know. So I call them Power BI Pioneers, and these guys are not at the top, right? This is usually some lone man <laughs> somewhere in the group and who just discovers Power BI and goes, man, this is awesome. And he plays with it, he or she plays with it and then says, man, this, this is too good, right? I mean, others should have it too. And it, it's almost like you have this message in your heart and you have to spread it. And they go on this mission to kind of spread this within the organization to talk to people. Now, the oddest thing that I've seen is, is that the, the specific title doesn't matter that much. I've seen folks who were Power BI pioneers who were like a, in a senior role and folks there who are working in the call center industry. And again, they just stumbled on it, they fell in love with it, they started doing with it for their own group, for other groups, and it grew from there. So usually for the, for the stories with, the happy, with, with you know, kind of um, happy outcomes, they, uh, they, do, they do get senior management approval at some point of time. Some point of time, like the, the person, so that's a real example, the person at the call center, the headquarters call, called them. And, and flew him in. This was a few years ago, of course, before COVID. So they flew him in and said, hey, yeah, we've been hearing a lot of good stuff you've been doing. You know, why don't you show us? So he went up to their senior management and the C-suite and presented. And this person was just, yeah, you know, somebody in the call center. So um, uh, I don't know how to make sense of that. So is that how it always starts? Does it start top down? Does it matter? Is one approach better than the other? Raul, let's uh, hear from you. I don't you. think it. I don't think there's a specific one. No, both both work until they don't. What I mean now, mm. you know, they, we both we, we both know. We are all of us can have examples, many examples of of you know somebody at the bottom that went up and so. 
but yeah. more than likely the, the the ones that work out in my opinion the majority started it doesn't have to be way at the top but somebody that has some leeway yeah, yeah, yeah. that is a decision maker love it, love it, that it. that uh, brought it in i've been very lucky that i've engaged from the beginning with uh with uh, uh senior people that mm-hmm. were decision makers um it, it, you know I'm, I'm working as you're saying the the first guy that you mentioned uh, adam in, in north riley north carolina I'm work, he's, we work together um, and uh, he's an end user, but he's now also a, 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 a business intelligence analyst. And we go back and forth. So I don't just do the stuff, and this is what I've done for you, but rather we use each other as a sounding board to develop things. As Danny was saying, he's mm-hmm. uh, you know, sharing information, how to share it, how to improve the UI, because yeah. they are the end users. If you get somebody like that, not only to help you with decisions and push it forward, but rather on what does the end user want and uh it creates an amazing uh product in the end cool. so uh, go ahead. it is awesome. it is key for me it's key and i don't work with with you know i don't start working with people that unfortunately aren't decision makers because my experience has always been kind of yeah. bad yeah all right so hey folks i i realized that i missed uh doing a shout out <laughs> for real power bi at the beginning i'll you know i'll just <laughs> give a quick shout out now because it, it is a great opportunity so Real Power BI applications are open now, and the idea is simple: is to um, is to uh, get free help to businesses who are stuck getting started with Power BI. And you can read all about it by going to realpowerbi.com. It details out how this concept works. And of course, the biggest question of all people ask is that why why is it free? and what's the catch there. So uh, you can read all about it again at realpowerbi.com. Great opportunity there. And really the essence of it is that you're gonna be matched with one of our members in our Power BI Consultant program. So the way we see it, it's a win-win. Um, and, and and yeah, we've, we've had great outcomes from this. Of course, you can read uh, some of that on this page. You can watch the past Real Power BI project presentations. And yeah, we've had uh, tremendous uh, wins on both sides, of course, it's been great for the consultants and great for the businesses. Uh, as Raul pointed out, a lot of them have, have evolved into these long-term partnerships, but they started off with this uh, with this Real Power BI engagement. So again, go to realpowerbi.com for more information. So Danny, I wanna to come to you. And, and this idea, so you, you said that things start from the top, but I think I've seen this elsewhere. Maybe you didn't mean it literally. Um, is that sometimes the sponsor, the guy I work with uh, as a Power BI consultant, he's not quite at the top. He's somebody in, in with enough influence with the senior management. He has a year, and 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 I don't know. I'm mean, somehow it's it's more uh, has been more powerful for me. For one, <laughs> these folks are far more accessible than uh, d- let's d- d- really the top honchos, the C-suite, and so forth. So. So yeah, I mean, I end up hanging out with them. Frankly, I end up being friends with them, and it ter- it turns out into a great relationship. Have you seen that? Should we be aiming for some person like that specifically, or should we talk to senior management? Of course, yeah. So, what's your take on that? Yeah. So don't get me wrong. It's not that the the, the senior management management asked me to make those reports, and then they said, "Oh, wow, this is exactly what we need." Mm. No, exactly. It is like it is. Like you said, you start at a lower level, yeah. and because you do good work, it yep. it will go up, right, in the organization. Yeah. yeah, it people bring it with them. It was not necessarily that I brought it to them, but other people said, "Hey, look at this. Look at how good this is." And yeah. then it it goes on and on and on. But once it has reached that top yes. or a certain a level yes. of seniority, then oh. it starts to trickle down. Right love then, it, other departments it. come in as well, and that's uh, yeah, oh, that is yeah, the, the great yeah. work of Power BI. I'm I'm, love I'm it, convinced of that, and yeah, so man. yeah, you can start small, but good things, good news tra- travels fast, right? Yeah, and indeed. good news travels yeah. up in this case as well. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, <laughs> that people will pick it up, and then they will yeah. get curious. That's that's great. So so I feel like folks, there might be a winning strategy here because I'm I'm hearing versions of that from all three of us. And of course, I've heard this from other folks as well, that yeah, you, you gotta, you know, so I call it the shining beacon project. And again, you, you're most likely not engaging, you weren't called in by the senior management and, and, and yeah, you just work with a sponsor 
who's high enough that once you have a V1 of the project, they're going to be able to showcase it, uh, get it around. And um, uh, so, by the way, we've talked about Shining Beacon project before. I'm just going to give the three requirements that I see uh, really quickly. One is that it's, I look for something which is either hard or impossible in their current world. Which is like, oh, yeah, it can't be done. Or it's like, oh, yeah, that takes a week of sweat and tears, you know, <laughs> sweat, blood and tears. Right? So I look for that. And, and then there's a whole bunch of stuff like that. But then I pick on, narrow down on stuff that I know is actually going to be easy in the new Power BI world. And there are so many examples of that, of stuff that is hard or impossible in the old world, really easy in the new world. And the third thing that I look for is kind of obvious, but trust me, I've missed it. So <laughs> I've learned from my experience, which is that it's got to be something that they care about. And imagine if you build the first project, for one, you're stacking the deck totally in your favor because you're picking something hard or impossible in the old world, but easy in the new world. So yeah, you're making it easy. That really means you should be done in a month. Shouldn't take more than that, uh, probably sooner. You know, and and of course, since it's important for them, then once you start showing it, and again, I know I have a shining beacon project just by the reaction, and and usually e either they say, "Whoa, how did you do that?" or let's say I'm I'm showing something that I built for the North America sales team because they're the ones who sponsored me. Again, like finding that sponsor a little bit lower down, kind of the peg is has maybe is a great idea. Uh, so then uh, the other question they they, they say is that. Uh, Oh, can you do that for me? Right. So I'm if you're showcasing it in the Asia Pacific or the Middle East, it's like, oh, whoa, this is awesome. Can you do it for us? Right. So, uh, how do you do that? Or can you do that for us? Those are just golden words. And if you hear that, you, you pretty much nailed it. And again, as Danny said, it's just good news travels fast. So it's, it's kind of all, um, it definitely gets easier from there. And, 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 and I think also we, we need to acknowledge what both Raul and Danny were saying, which is that. You can start that way, but once you do get the kind of the blessing of the the, the CEO or well, whoever is heading the organization, that is definitely a huge turning point because then things get easier with IT. You get interest with the business groups, and I often let once you have that kind of momentum, frankly, IT becomes much less friction because for one, as a Power BI consultant, I don't have to deal with that. I don't have to convince them. The business users, they go to bat for me. They talk to them and say, hey, why aren't you giving access or whatever I need, right? And I think somebody had a comment like, they should uh, uh, they should just tell IT, get this person whatever they ask for. And if you have navigated this path, I'm usually at that point. Yeah. And again, I don't even have to make that case. They just they just tell them, like, yep, you know, whatever they want, give it to them. Cool. So let's talk about <laughs> business groups and switch gears. So man, this is great power. Why why is this world fundamentally different than what we have had before, which is a whole load of Excel, but I don't want to throw Excel under the bus. I mean, it's a great tool. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there, and there are, of course, loads of other BI tools there to supposedly help the whole organization. Why is this new world fundamentally different? Da Danny, what's, what's your take on that? What's the great power that the business groups now have? Well, the one did. thing that Microsoft did an awesome job with, of course, is make it part of their product suite, right? It's, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's marketing. <laughs> yeah, right? bundle it with Office. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's how, that's, how it will become the new about, Excel, right? Yeah, yeah. that's, that's yeah. lovely, man. That's, yeah. And, and, but at the same time, uh, you said it in one of the other shows uh, that, that they definitely need Tableau as well in order to keep their mark up, eh? in order to oh, be able yeah. to develop uh, Power BI as well. So you need yeah. your competitors. So you need people in Tableau and and, and, the, and the click sends and what have you. So uh, otherwise Power BI will be dead soon as well uh, if they don't uh, develop that. But I think the marketing is one of the things uh, that, that makes it so easy. When I started a few years ago with Power BI, I got lots of quizzical uh, looks on faces when I mentioned it. But nowadays they say, oh yeah, I've seen it. It's part of the product suite. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, you install it. Uh, totally true. No, totally no true. problem. Yeah. So, yeah. so of course, as Power BI consultants or, 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 or businesses, right? I mean, we, we're basically running a small business, right? So, you know, there's this whole theory about where are you targeting your audience? Where, you know, the problem aware, like they're aware of the problem, but they don't know about the solution then you have to educate them on the solution. Some of them are solution affair, but they don't know how to implement it. 
So initially when I started, I was doing a whole lot of education where people didn't know about Power BI. So I was going out there and making a case for Power BI. Man, I stopped doing that a few years ago. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I, I love what Microsoft is doing. Yep, they're getting the word out. And again, almost 100% people I get in my training programs through our consulting path or um, all of that. Yeah, they, they know about Power BI. They almost even convinced that it's the right thing. They just need a bit of help. So um, that's most of the case. Uh, Raul, what's your take on why is this fundamentally different? Why what is new power does the business group have? I think it because of how I find it incredibly powerful. It is ridiculously powerful. It is yeah. cost efficient, but uh, the automation, the the automation, the the taking away the the the, the grind the work, hard right? work oh, the God, yeah. the 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 donkey work as they call it in Ireland <laughs> yeah. uh, you know the donkey work and I think and I'll, I'll I'll keep it brief but I've given you this example Adam of um, rather Abby of why how I, I I refocused and completely focused I've been in business you know business manager engineering manager for twenty five years almost always doing data and tables and looking at relationships and doing financial uh, analysis for clients on their on their investment their development investment because i'm in it okay but uh, some number of years ago working with power query and power pivot okay a client had a client that was massive uh, uh, billions in revenue they had a dedicated data uh, group who would spend, they had one person, dedicated junior, but expensive uh, mm -hmm. analyst that would every Monday would get a data dump from 10 different, uh, uh, 15 different uh, uh, business groups yeah. uh, in CSV, Excel, some in Word, some in PowerPoint, and some in PDF. And this person had to spend Monday through Thursday cleaning that data, VLOOKUP, typing it up, if, when, and, to present an incredibly simple and bland report that was printed for the C-suite on Friday. I convinced them because I had been doing some work with it. I convinced them to allow me to train somebody and hire someone to train them. Uh, long story short, we trained for three weeks with prior reports to be able to benchmark it. We did the Power Query ETL. Mm -hmm. On Monday, this person came nervous. We got a real one, a live one. I got a call from headquarters. Look, you better not drop the ball on this one. They said it with different language, but uh, it better be ready by Thursday. <laughs> Monday lo at lunch, this person came up to me and said, hey, it's done. Wow. I said, okay, let's sit down. Let's sit down for an hour. We did some tables just to a couple of extracts to see a match and match and match. We sent it over to headquarters. I got a call on Tuesday yeah. with a bit of annoyance. It's like, look, you don't have to send us progress reports. Send us the stuff on Thursday. I said, it's done. Okay, long story short, you know, hire seven more people, train them, and then, okay, we parted ways. But yeah. um, it, I couldn't believe, as if somebody had told me that, yeah, I would have said, mm, so, you, no, that does not, it couldn't be. Yeah. I, it yeah. could not be. And it was. So the question, why do I think Power BI and the new BI is developing so much? Because of how incredibly powerful it is to do that. Yeah. Something that literally was taking four days and $100,000 a year in costs could be done at a click of a button. That's yeah. an extreme case. And I was lucky to see it because it changed what I was, you know, my What's, focus. Oh, well, yeah. But it is that, that it is that powerful yeah. and incredibly power, uh, expect, not an unexpensive. Yeah. So um, I think that's what it is. Like the initial, we've spoken about this before, Avi, how the, a, a big problem that I have at least, I, less and less, but I have it. People don't believe it yeah. when you tell, tell them, this is what's going to be done. We're mm -hmm. going to go, this is going to be done automatically. And every day at a click of a button, you're going to have the updated report. You know, people, yeah. their initial reaction is like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, you know, that, that's a real but concern. They, they have seen yeah. it. <laughs> so for, I, I think that that's it. Uh, the, it, it, without you know too much it, it works incredibly well cost efficiently with incredible power yeah so hey, that's well, that's why well yeah. said and and funny thing is man that that so you're gonna love this so this is uh steven waiter from our uh he's also in the public consulting program and he said these words and the first time he said it to me i'm like bingo man spot on so what he said was that you know the classic rule that people say it's like good, fast, and cheap, and say you can only have two, 
right? I mean, if you want good and you want fast, it's not going to be cheap. Right? It's going to cost you. And if if you want uh, uh, f- uh, fast and cheap, it's not going to be good. But he said, man, Power BI is the exception to the rule, <laughs> and that's why nobody believes it, right? You go out mm-hmm. there telling them, yep, yep, it's it's, it's going to be good. It's like, oh yeah, is it going to be fast? Like, yeah, it's going to be fast. Oh, that it has to cost an arm and a Like, no, it's cheap. And then everybody's like, nope, nope, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so yeah, that's the challenge you face. But of course, no, I always talk I've about that. Pro- proof in the pudding, right? I mean, you let them see it, and then yeah, you don't have to explain much. They after can't that. believe it. Like very shortly, I've had experiences. I'm sure Danny, you've had it as well. Like talking to prospective oh, yeah. clients and talking, describing what it can be done, and a estimate of the cost. And uh, I think I've told you, I said it before, and, and I thought that I was, I had said something wrong, you know, uh, because the person was visibly upset. And he told me, I just spent about $300,000 yeah. on something with, you know, with a subscription for five years. Oh, boy. That does that. Yeah. Uh, I, I, he couldn't believe it. And it's true. So, yeah. you know, so, it, yeah. it sounds made my, up. <laughs> my Power BI origin story was that. I made a BI group, which consists of multiple people and and, um, external vendor and yep, millions of dollars in fees every year. And I built a system part time, which worked better, was far more accurate, far more useful for the business community. They loved it. And yep, that that old thing went away. Millions of dollars per year. Um, Danny, do, do, do you have a story like that? Well, I, I have a complete different story is that uh, one company uh, that, uh, that hired me uh, had a management information system and that was basically sending out a PDF every three months out to the whole world and yeah. saying, okay, this is the management information. <laughs> yeah. And then I said, oh my goodness, guys, how can, how can you be so backward? So I said to them, yeah, give me, give me a couple of weeks. Uh, I'll, I'll redo this and I'll make it even better for you. Uh, and I'll make it interactive, uh, and and I'll make it available on the, on the first uh, day of the month. Uh, and, and if you want, we can do updates weekly. And they said, no, that can't be done. <laughs> yeah. You're going to do this all by yourself? Impossible. But and when you show it uh, a, a few weeks later, ah, they. they, they they, they hardly dare to touch it. They are so afraid that they, they're breaking something, right? But I said, no, go ahead and click. There's nothing yeah. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've heard them say that. It's like, yeah, I don't want to break. And I said, nope, don't worry. It's yeah, yeah, exactly. read only. <laughs> Just refresh yeah. the browser and we reset. Oh, yeah. That's All right. But so, I wanted to yeah. say, Avi, that 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 came up to, to, to me is that... Mm-hmm. Um, Still, Power BI is some kind of a, a parasite system in the sense that we need all the other IT systems. So the IT department and, and yeah. um, other legacy systems will never become redundant in that. Yeah. You, I mean, you need to store data somewhere, uh, whether it's from your clients or whether it's your, your journal entries or whatever it is, that yeah. will never be done directly in Power BI. So it always yeah. has to pick off the other systems, right, in that sense. Oh, and absolutely. parasite sounds negative but i think yeah, you catch my yeah. drift yeah yeah now you're now you're reminding me of all my biology lessons and i'm, I'm thinking of the word uh, symbiosis right so i definitely yeah. see it as a symbiotic relationship Sym- symbiotic um, yep. and, symbiotic and, yeah and 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 the key is that again i mean it far from getting redundant i i feel the role of it is even more critical but they need to step up to that bloody role mm. because yeah. they can't do the stuff that they were doing earlier which was so i always compare it to that IT in a lot of uh, companies in the dysfunctional state, they're used to giving people rights, right? So they're like, oh, you need to go from here to there. Oh, you need this report, you need that report, right? So they're giving them rights and to the point where we would have change requests, which will say, oh, can you change this bar graph to a line chart? <laughs> now, that is ridiculous, right? So think about yeah. it. They're so busy giving people rights that they can't focus on the main role, which should be to build the roads. So yeah, man, they their, their role needs to change. It's, they need to let the business users drive around wherever they want and taking themselves self-service BI. And then they can sit back. Instead of handling the flood of change requests, they can frankly pick the winners. And I mean, this is such a dream world for IT because this is what IT, 
life in IT is like you're overworking and underappreciated. Because business is always freaking asking for stuff nonstop. It never ends. They're never happy. And the worst part of it is that the 100 things they ask for, maybe they use 50 of them. Right? <laughs> I mean, who knows? Like, nobody knows. You deliver something, it's like, yeah, and then like, oh, yeah, sorry, I need change. Yeah, we don't need it anymore. Or you go back and report, or a report stops working. And for a week or two, like nobody complains and you're like, what the heck, right? So, so that's the world they're living in. And now they have a chance to step into this new world where they can just let the business users kind of experiment and so forth and just pick the winners. All they have to do is go to PowerBI.com, look at the usage report and say, hey, look, this report that Danny built, man, that's getting heavy usage. Let's talk to Danny. And let's see if he can make it official. <laughs> let's make sure, yeah. you know, there's no stuff on his desktop. And I mean, I've heard those stories too, right? I mean, yeah. people, the Power BI person leaves and 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 suddenly they yeah. call us like, Avi, we need your help, mate, because this guy <laughs> left and nobody, you know, so IT can step in. Yeah. Oh boy, cool. So, hey, that got me really excited, but folks, hopefully you see that. So let's switch gears. Let's talk about what is, with great power comes great responsibility. Ooh, one of my favorite quotes uh, from Spider-Man, of course. Um, and so they have great power now, but what is the responsibility of the business group? I don't know, I'll, I'll let you guys, whoever wants to go first. I don't know where to go with this topic, but there is something there, right? What is their responsibility? I guess it comes to, to what do you call it, to, uh, I, I sounds, it sounds like a Hallmark quote or something it's like, you know, produce <laughs> reports or produce data that is accurate. Um, we all know that, you know, it, it, the initial clicky, clicky, draggy, draggy can give you, it, the thing looks right, but you, you know, you have to make sure that the interactions and the numbers that are being brought in are correct, especially if the, the, as we all know, in anything in life, if the mistake is not obvious, if it's off by, you know, five, 10%, you might not catch oh, it. Man. So it is, oh, um, yeah. it is key that you 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 check your numbers and you know again th with many things that sometimes i find my the clients they don't understand no but they're like that surely that should be faster it's like no guys we have because this can be grouped and sliced and diced in so many different ways yeah there are different things that have to be checked now and make sure that the interactions are correct so i that's the first thing that pops into my head i mean there are millions more but wow make I, sure I, that the numbers that you're yeah. putting out yeah, yeah, yeah. so are, are the insights that you're giving are correct yeah i mean frankly I'm going to take a big leap here, big leap, and, and just go where Raul, I feel, is pointing us, which which is, guys, they were the cowboy days, right, where, yeah, business groups did what they did, and it was kind of a disconnect, right? But now the, the, these two worlds are merging. So we're hearing a lot of comments in in uh, about, oh, IT needs to do this, IT needs to do that. But I feel that, again, with great power, we do get great responsibility. You cannot shirk that. You cannot step away from that. I feel that man, it's a, it's, it's, it's an obligation. It's a responsibility for business users who start to use these new tools. You gotta educate yourself more about this stuff, right? You gotta get a better understanding of uh, data quality to start with. Right? <laughs> because if you don't understand that you're working with not dirty data often, but you know, you're using it in the wrong context, that can be data quality as well. And you pick something which was meant for A and you're doing it for B and then presenting it to everybody because you now can, that can be really, really dangerous, right? So data quality is A. And then of course, you know, kind of data exploration and interpretation. I think Raul was talking about that. It's like, yeah, I mean, you can take the same data and fiddle with it, tweak it, and have it say A versus B. And of course, there's all uh, lying with the reports thing. We wouldn't even go there. Hopefully you don't do that. And lastly, the last part, I think they need to uh, step up and take that response or take that ownership, which is that storytelling. Because it's not about data, right? It's 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 the story that you tell. That's what's, I mean, inevitably, frankly. So, um, um, you know, my joke used to be that, uh, you know, all data kind of ends in Excel. And now, of course, all data ends in Power BI, right? So everything kind of ends in Power BI. But the frankly, guys, the final joke is on us. <laughs> well, kind of, used to be at least, because it then ends into PowerPoint. <laughs> and unfortunately, it still does sometimes, right? But but yeah, in the end, it's gonna be a presentation to management about a specific issue. And you're not, if we're just showing dry data and you gotta, you gotta be able to guide them a bit more. So I think data quality, maybe just, 
you know, kind of data interpretation and data storytelling, uh, they should learn some of these skills too. Danny, I want to hear from you. What's your take on all this? What's, no, what's the I, responsibility I side for business scripts now? Yeah, I completely agree. You have to be very careful with the data and that's why you need business knowledge. And that is uh, that is the the thing and foremost thing that that we need yeah. to be sure about. Whatever you bring together, it still needs to be in in the proper context. Uh, and and you have to be careful what you're showing uh, uh, to uh, to the people out there as well. And and second of all, and I just saw it in in one of the comments as well that hey, my colleagues are not getting very enthusiastic about this Power BI. I'm making all these reports, but they're not picking it up. It is indeed what you said, Avi. It's also about the storytelling. It doesn't go by itself. And you need to tell the, the story. Guys, this is what you can see and this is what you can do with it. And look what kind of insights I already found. Yeah. Well, you're even more of a business user. I'm yeah. sure there are thousands of other things that I didn't think about yet that you uh, you can find out. Yeah. And the, the, I mean, the, it starts sometimes very simple. You show the whole company and then they say, but how about the Asia Pacific area? And you just click and there, yeah. there's the Asia Pacific. Yeah. Oh, 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 can we make this as well for North America? A boom, you yeah. just click the button and it's there. So yeah. you need to show them because they're not gonna click it by themselves because then they don't know yeah. what they look at anymore. So it is a great responsibility as well. Be careful with the data you're using, understand the logic. Yeah. Continue to talk with uh, whether it's your sponsor or with the, the, the business users and always bring it to them with the, with a story yeah. that is very important so folks man I, I had no idea that this is going to lead us here but the point where i'm at so i always talk about that being an employee and being a consultant is not that different i mean employee you, you have internal clients versus consultant you have external clients so i'm going to bring in uh the framework and the milestones we use in our power BI consulting program and say that that's important for everybody. Again, it's, it's built for the consultant, but again, it, it applies to everybody. So our, our, our framework starts with step one is define your niche. And step two is by the way, create your story. But even if you st stay there, define your niche, we do a lot of work inside a group to kind of nail that down. And again, it's, it's usually an agile process. You evolve over time. In a way, I'm still evolving and, and fine tuning my niche. But a part of that is, of course, you say that, oh yeah, this is my, so let's say you're, well, obviously, so let's say you're in a group where you're working with a sales team. So, well, they are your niche right now. They're your target niche right now. You're working with them. But but another key aspect of that is one, once you zero it down, we really try to get under the skin of, of that uh, target audience, that niche, and try to understand what are their problems. And I think so, uh, whoever made the comment about that, hey, I'm doing a lot of stuff, but it's not being noticed. Well, maybe because there's a disconnect there. And I know I have done that, where I would go there and do like a dog and pony show. It's like, oh yeah, look at all these reports. But if I missed what their key pain points are, what they care about, then it's not gonna resonate. Instead of doing a whole lot of stuff, so I truly believe in the idea that less is more. If you really focus and understand that, yep, these are their pain points. And, and, and again, look, I look for that shining beacon combination where I say, this is really painful for them right now, but I know that this is gonna be easy fix in Power BI. I look for those so I can do them really quickly. And if you go back to them with that one example, say, hey, look, this took you a week of blood, sweat, and tears to do this report. Now you can click this button. Now you have to be a, a little bit sensitive though. So I use that as an example, but sometimes people are like, oh, then, what do I do then? Then I'm redundant. Then I don't have a job. And and you you got to watch out for that, right? And sometimes they they like in a way. I mean, they hate it, but they also like that they're they're the central point of failure. Right? I mean, they're, they're the ones doing it. Nobody else can do it. That sort of stuff. So, but but yeah. So I think that step one is crucial for either you're an employee or a consultant role. You understand your niche, and you understand what their pain points are. People care about their problems. If you solve their problems for you, good things gonna happen <laughs> in terms of, uh, uh, yeah, awesome. Um, all right, folks, so hey, great discussion here. Um, let's see what Robert is uh, queued up. So Robert, uh, might as well turn on your webcam. Let's uh, get you on there. Uh, so Robert, it sounded like you, you have, 
faced some of this too. Um, <laughs> uh, well, just just curious, what is the dynamic that's uh, in your company right now between IT and business groups as far as BI goes? Yeah. So so um, well well the, the first so so what I've realized is uh, my company is is an ISP. And we also have to, I have to work with IT in, in my company and IT from other, com, uh, other companies. Mm -hmm. And one, um, so th there are some bad things and there are some pretty exciting things that have happened. So, so th th I'll start with the exciting one. And yeah. one thing that I can say for sure is I have seen the transition from old IT to new IT. Uh, for instance, if, if I, I look back maybe one year down the line when I was just starting out in Power BI and uh, just like we have mentioned the first thing that came to mind when I mentioned the database was security and and they, they were really concerned uh, is this data going to be safe and and I'm talking about in the company internally and they were concerned about security mm -hmm. the, the other thing that I found to be quite a challenge was uh, in terms of resources uh, we have an in-house development team and uh, for them when they are developing their staff they kind of allocate these databases the very limited resources they just want their staff to run and their concern once i start querying staff they, they, there's going to be changes but yeah. but but now the exciting bit is the transition over i have seen as we have worked with them they're the ones who are actually involving me in meetings and, mm -hmm. and kind of involving me in their stuff, yeah. uh, wanting to know how how can we work together to get a, a, a report kit. So, so that has been, I, I can see people, you know, uh, IT has uh, kind of understood the need to evolve and work together with, with, with the business. And they have seen how Power BI is uh, literally yeah. a game changer. Yeah. So, so that That's has awesome, been quite. Man. That's awesome. That yeah. sounds like an awesome journey. Cool. So Robert uh, queued up uh, uh, a question from Scott here, and Scott Williams is asking, "How do you get customers to use the reports you build?" Um, I think we touched on this. Maybe this was Scott's comment. My coworkers don't have the excitement you mentioned. I build and share the reports. I look at use in metrics, and it's empty. Ooh. So um, I think we addressed that. Uh, sit down with them, talk to them, see what their pain points are, and and yeah, just solve one and just kind of test it. Uh, Raul, Danny, do it you could be, do you have any I, thoughts? I think that. This? Yeah. Sorry, the, the, Martin mentioned that. Yeah, show it to them. Show them like the different things. What I think is. What could be happening, it certainly has happened to me, is when, uh, you know, the example of uh, an old uh, company, very big company that was, is and still is a leader in, in the world, uh, amongst many things they do is uh, um, households, uh, appliances and kitchens and whatnot. And the way they used to develop things is engineer would go develop something and look now when you open the fridge, this light comes on and something happens and, you know, they would develop something engineering very complex. Yeah, and then we'd go and tell the man, the, the marketing, go and, and, and sell this. Yeah. They weren't asking the people what they wanted. Um, now I'm not sure if that's the case, or if that's it. You know, maybe uh, it's certain yeah. reports they've been used. But if you go and ask the people, what is it that you already have or that you're trying to do? As you said, Abby, develop it for them. That will give them even prove on it, and show it to them. It's like this is what the way you used to do it. This is how it can be done with this, and it's automatic. Yeah, I think that'll that'll change them over because I've seen that yeah. um, with the initial naysayers, you know, after a while, they're like, yeah, you know, they come with their a bit embarrassed and they say, can you help me and do this? Because they've seen it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. To, so, good, good points, Raul. So just two thoughts come to me is that, yeah, maybe start small, maybe start as small as one person. And, and again, we were talking about getting that right person involved who has here and, and 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 see if you can build something just for that one person and if they can spread the word so again i mean it can be one person can be a small team so start small that could be a thing now if you are doing all of these things and it's still not working i had one other thought which is and then man sometimes people need a little bit of help a little bit of hand holding sometimes they, they look at this thing and i think danny mentioned that where they're scared to touch it 
So sometimes you just need to really hold their hand. And sometimes, you know, the thing is that I've been around Power BI for so long that I forget that it can be intimidating for new users, right? I mean, I'm like, oh, this is awesome. And, and they're like, oh, you know. So I literally have to like hold their hand, like do sessions, sometimes one-on-one -on -one sessions. Sometimes I do brown bags where I would invite a team. Uh, sometimes I do one-on-one -on -one where I was just, you know, it's like, yep, yeah, click here and you could do this. So if you are doing all of the other things right, we're like, no, man, I, I listen to them and listen to the pain points, but they're still not using it. Maybe they just need that little bit of hand holding earlier. Um, uh, cool. Uh, Robert, did you did you see any other uh, uh, comments, interesting comments or questions out there? No. no. Awesome. Great. So uh, I want to thank our hosts again. And uh, uh, so, folks, there are links in the description in the video to connect with them on LinkedIn. So, uh, uh, Danny and Raul, why don't both of you tell us a little bit about uh, your niche, about which which kind of the uh, uh, audience focus that you serve with uh, your Power BI skills. Um, Raul, let's uh, go with you. Um, I well, I help. Uh, I've helped all sorts of different companies, but I'm uh, I'm focusing going towards companies that um, have to store and warehouse a lot of products either for their own production. Uh, companies that uh, store a lot of high numbers of materials uh, to use them in their own products or to sell um, and uh, like uh, uh, distributors and whatnot. So I help them obviously with their uh, accounts receivable and whatnot and accounting, but also with the storage and inventory management and optimization. Awesome. Um, that is what I've been going to and, and focusing more on. Great. Improving so their processes overall, uh, uh, but that type of company. Awesome. So, folks, if, if you fit that bill, <laughs> make sure to find uh, his LinkedIn link in the description and connect with him. Uh, Danny, who, who do you serve? Uh, I'm, I'm, I have been for the longest time a financial uh, uh, planning and analysis manager in the financial services industry. Uh, 20 plus years of, uh, um, of business knowledge uh, there um and currently making my way into the the training business of, uh, of power bi i've uh, teamed up with uh, grace tio in singapore uh to uh, right. to start uh, with training there so uh, i think uh, great things to come indeed great things to come all right folks what a great note and things on uh big thanks to robert for keeping an eye on the chat and uh you know adding to the discussion here uh so thank you folks we will see you again until then 